We've seen the heats, we're now down to the real deal. Eight huge men, six traditional events, and this, the mighty sword that they all want to get their hands on, but only the victor will. This is the final of the Highlander Challenge World Series. Scotland, a rugged and beautiful land with a turbulent history that has forged the character of its tenacious and noble people. Here at Schoon Palace, another battle awaits. We've seen our international athletes battling it out in two fiercely fought heats as they compete for the title of the greatest Highlander of them all. Our incumbent champion Sebastian Venter is still in the running, but looking to wrestle that title from him is Scotland's Gregor Edmonds and England's Scott Ryder. Let's kick things off with the traditional parade. just one aim, to beat the Chieftain's champion, the incumbent Highlander, Sebastian Venter. I lay down this challenge for any man to take this sword from the champion, the King's champion. I am champion Highlander. Let the games begin. Let's see the eight challengers who made it through. Gregor Edmonds from Glasgow, Scotland. 22 stone, 6 foot 4, and a professional athlete. I'm Kirill Chuprinin, Ukraine. 160 kilo. I'm professional athlete. I'm Dave Barron from New York City. I'm 36 years old and an attorney. I'm a 6 foot 3, 125 kilos. I'm Wout Silstra from Holland, Friesland. I'm 6 foot 6, under 45 kilos. I'm meat inspector. I was a packer! Scott Ryder, 30 years of age. I weigh 120 kilos, I'm 6 foot 2. I'm a PE teacher and I live in London. Janis Horka from Sweden, 23 years old, 140 kilo, and I'm the Viking invader. Sean Betts, 32 years old, 138 kilos, 6 foot 5, personal trainer, USA. Sebastian Venta, Poland, 165 kilo, I am champion. Ogólnie wszyscy są bardzo mocno przygotowani, jest to światowa impreza i wcale się nie dziwię. Dlatego nie będzie lekko wygrać pierwszego miejsca. Być na podium to będzie naprawdę coś. First up is the hammer throw. It's a spectacular event and the record is over 155 feet. This is what a hammer is used for in peacetime. Just think about what it could do in war. The first recorded use of a hammer in battle was the Arduch, where the Picts threw fiery orbs into the fort, burning out the Romans and sending them out of Scotland forever. Great balls of fire! Right, here's our commentary team, Colin Bryce and Hamish Davidson. Our first thrower, 
the Englishman Scott Ryder, the PE teacher who uh, actually teaches in Regent's Park. You wouldn't get away with throwing this there though. And uh, Hamish, that looks like a good pull. Yes, that's long. He's over 130 feet. He's improved dramatically in this event. Uh, the shot putter, he's a 3 A's champion. That's right, he won the indoor Great Britain title before going to the Commonwealth Games, Scott Ryder. And uh, in the first heat, surprised everybody with a 138-foot throw with the hammer. I don't think it's quite as good as that today. But still, a good effort. Now, uh, the world champion of 2007 in the Highland Games was Gregor Edmonds of Scotland. Gregor is exceptionally strong all round in all of these throwing events. That's why he won the World Championship last year. Oh, that was a good effort from Edmonds. He didn't do so well in the heats and some of the throwing events you expected him to do well in, but he's starting to find his rhythm now, and that's right up there with the Englishman. He is, of course, 23 stones and six foot five. A true giant, Gregor Edmonds. Has to be one of the favourites for today. Now, uh, coming from the throwing side of things, it's Dave Barron, the Manhattan lawyer by day, or rather by weekday and by weekend. He is a true Highland Games warrior. One of the finest America has produced over the last few years, and that's a good throw again. Yes, Getting... it's a good throw, but it's uh, a bit back from the leading group. Well, it looks about 120 to 125 foot. Ryder's up at about 137 or 8, and uh, Edmund's just behind, I think. Ah, it's a truly magnificent day here at Schoon. The palace, as always, is just a stunning backdrop to this wonderful Highland Games event. And Wout Zilstra, a man who's very experienced, 44 years of age, coming from Holland, from Friesland, to be exact. Now, Hamish, his hammer is something that seems to have suffered as yes, the years have gone by. Yes, this is uh, probably the event that shows most uh, declining as you get older. So, Zilster's throw there, around about the 115 foot mark, and uh, he's at the rear of the field here. Sean Betts, the world champion this year, from Nebraska in America. Hamish, the American's so solid here. Yes, this is tremendous technique. Very high, fast, and he's way out. These Americans certainly have come on in leaps and bounds with the Highland throwing events. Well, that's got to be 140 feet at least, and that puts him well clear of Scott Ryder. We expected him to do well here. He did win this event in the first heat, so no surprise. Tremendous throwing, nearly 40 metres in distance. So, <laughs> Johannes Orcha, the young Swede, did well to make the final and looks a little out of his depth throwing that hammer. Not something he's obviously uh, practised before, Hamish. No, it doesn't seem as if he has practised it much at all. I don't think he even has uh, spiked boots there to anchor him to the ground. That's right. The Competitors in the Highland Games wear six-inch spikes on the end of their boots to root them to the ground. We can see uh, Sebastian just digging himself in there. Now here's another man who has improved massively in the hammer over the last two years. The second strongest man in the world, Sebastian Venter. And of course our Highlander Challenge champion from last year. How does he open his account? Oh, very well is the answer. It's uh, tight with Ryder there. It looks like he's in second place, but we can't say too much at this stage. Well, I would reckon that's somewhere around the 134 foot mark, so probably just behind the Englishman. And uh, that brings out our final thrower in this uh, hammer event. Kirill Shuprinen. This is a massive man. His shoulders are actually so broad, I don't know if this would be considered one of his best events. But he does have long arms, doesn't he? He is a former Olympic discus thrower. So, uh, if he has the range of movement, ooh, which he doesn't, very tight around the shoulders. Very tight, yes. Two swings and it's an improvement, but not to trouble the leaders. 
He looks a little disappointed, Shaprunin. And you wonder whether the events in the finals are going to suit the Ukrainian who was so hot in heat two. So at the end of the first event, there's good performances from Sean Betts and Scott Ryder, with Sebastian Venter making a good steady start to the defence of his title. So that means that Sean Betts is leading at the start, but we've still got five more events to go. Welcome back. We've seen the hammer throw and Sean Betts is in the lead. Still to come, we've got a whole host of Highland action with five more events in the offing. As well as the games, we'll be meeting the clan. Oh! With the introduction of armour, a slashing claymore was pretty useless, so they needed something more effective. This vicious little fella the Morning Star. It could penetrate the toughest chainmail and armour and was the forerunner to the modern maze. The Highland Games has evolved through formal challenges to settle disputes, one of the most famous of which was across the River Tay at the Battle of North Inch, where the Macphersons and the Mackays fought to the death in front of a king and audience. The hero of the day was Hal of the Wind, who wreaked havoc with his hammer. The Mackays were slaughtered to a man who escaped by swimming this very river. Sebastian Venter, the first thrower in this uh, mace throwing competition, aka the 28 pound weight. So heavy, isn't it, Hamish? And that is exactly how to throw it. Yes, he's uh, exceptionally good at this event too. He's got such long levers at six feet seven tall. Well, some 13 kilos of metal there being launched by Venter. His uh, brother Lucas, who didn't make the final, just giving him a high five. But I'm sure Lucas is someone we'll see more of in the future. Now, Kirill Shapunin of Ukraine. Yay! It's a real battle for uh, Poland, the Ukrainian and the American in this uh, event, I think. Oh, this man's exceptionally strong, you see, and he can launch it out. There it is. It's a, a very good angle. Well, it is quite similar in some ways to the discus and of course that uh, Sydney Olympics he competed in where he made the final in the discus must carry over to this event. Dave Barron from New York. Oh a decent throw from Barron. I think it's a slight improvement on his previous round. Well that's all you can ask of yourself. <laughs> he seems fairly happy with it Hamish. Yes, he's got a good technique. As I said, these Americans are certainly coming on with all the Scottish Highland Games events. We still have the world champion to come from America, Sean Betts, who won the first event. But before that, uh, let's have a look at Johannes Orcha, one of the first Swedes I've ever seen in the Highland Games. He's got stacks of power, almost no technique. No technique. His uh, footwork is all over the place. If he I managed to acquire a, a proper technique you can throw it as far as the leaders, definitely. Undoubtedly, but uh, still, it's a, a very, very good throw. It's up over 70 feet, and uh, he's improved with every single throw. Now, Scott Ryder, the Olympian, the Commonwealth Games athlete, now turned to Highland Games. This is a very heavy event, and body weight sure does help Hamish, but he makes up for it He's in the speed. 80s there. He's well up into the high 80s, which is an excellent throw. He's got good footwork and a very fast, explosive delivery. Well, his wife, Julie, expecting their first baby in the next few days. A bit of prize money from here sure would help uh, with uh, a little rider on the way. Now, Wout Zilstra. What can he manage? He's actually a meat taster as his daytime job. Sounds like a great job for a six foot seven guy. Can get all that it protein in. Appears to be well over 70 feet anyhow. Yes, this was something that Vout used to throw up into the mid 80s, even near 90 feet. 
And uh, again, he just seems to have lost that slight explosive edge he had. And that brings out our uh, world champion, Sean Betts. And Hamish, you've been really impressed with him in yes. this event. Yes, here's a man who really can throw this weight. Watch the technique, the speed. Whoa! Wow. And it's way out. He gave it a big scream, and that's uh, often the sign of a good throw. It seems to be in the 90-foot range. Well, that's getting very close to the world record. There's very few people in the world who have thrown 90 feet. Now, Gregor Edmonds is one of those men who has thrown 90 feet. Yes, he has. He has thrown over 90 feet, but I still believe he can throw a lot more. Well, he's done two throws so far. Two have been very poor. He's not happy. Oh, you don't hear the big roar, but it is an improvement. It's getting closer to Ryder. I would have expected to see a bit more from Gregor, but this has been the day for Sean Betts. I'm joined now by the leader at the moment, Sean Betts. Two out of two, that's great. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, those are my two best events, so I was planning on that. I had to make up some ground to make up for some of my later events, so it went real well so far. And how are you feeling about the other events? They're your two strongest out of the way. How's tossing the cable for you? Uh, that's not a bad event. The next two are okay, and then the last two will be my hardest. But, you know, try to build a lead now and see what happens. Must give you a great confidence boost going into the rest of the, the event today. Oh, yeah. It's better than getting last in both of them. So, yeah, definitely. <laughs> that is very true. Well done. Keep it up. Sean rightfully pleased with his performance there, taking eight points with his massive throw. But Venta and Ryder are still very much in this one. So Betts holds his lead, but Ryder and Venter very much hot on his heels in joint second. In 1396, the famous Battle of North Inch took place near here. The King set 30 men against 30 men, and the result was carnage. Let the battle commence! Whoa! The battles of ancient times were harsh and terrifying. Local group The Clan have shown the crowd here a reenactment that shows just how scary it could be. for my favourite event, tossing the Kaba. Now there isn't a standard size of Kaba, so it should just be that only the best challengers can turn them. In Scotland there's a tradition of toasting before you go into battle, so we are going to toast tossing the Kaba and see who can toss the biggest stick of all. Six men earned the right to throw. And one cheeky little perk of that right is a sip of whiskey before you do. And even the caber gets the taste. In order to earn that right, to throw the challenge caber, you have to successfully toss the qualifying caber. Unfortunately, Betts and Orca failed to do just that. We're on to the challenge caber then, up at nearly 22 feet long. And Kirill Shaprunin, the Ukrainian, is the first man to have a go at it. Immense concentration here, Hamish. This is a huge beast. I don't care how strong you are. This takes no, real skill. This is uh, probably one of the biggest cabers ever in the world. It's especially for this event, 22 feet long. That's totally unheard of. But it's gone over. It has gone over. And uh, Shaprunin turns round to Grant Anderson with a nod, paying respect to the great judge. 
and hoping, of course, he'll be particularly kind to him. Now, it is the face of a clock, and uh, worried to have gone straight over the 90 degrees to straight ahead, it would have been 12 o'clock. I think it fell to the right somewhere around about perhaps 1.45, something like that. What do you think, Hamish? Yeah, 145, certainly 130? well off the 12 o'clock, which is, of course, a perfect throw. Uh, it's at least uh, 10 minutes past. So the rope is just going down there to help uh, our referee, Grant Anderson, gauge exactly where the 12 o'clock is. Look at the height of this caber. And, of course, the heavy end is up the top. It is truly a balancing feat as well as a feat of strength. Now, Sebastian Venter is just about the world's best. Surely he can toss it. Yes, he can. And Hamish, yes. that looks close to 12. It looks very close to 12. It may be one or two minutes off it, but uh, this man certainly has the strength to do it. He's picked it up very quickly, considering he only started Highland Games about two to three years ago. Well, depending on uh, whether you do it in minutes or hours, that's going to be about 11.30. So the perfect toss still awaits us. And uh, Wout Zilstra, well, he's done a fair few perfect 12s in his time. Never with a caber this big, though. The big Dutchman... He's got the tacky on his hands to help his hands stick together. Now, Wout has had a long experience in the Highland Games, perhaps 15 years or more. He knows what he's doing here. Well, you've had a few caber competitions with him, Hamish. He can normally pull it out when he has to. And over it goes, and it looks very straight. <laughs> Well, Grant Anderson doesn't flinch. <laughs> He's seen it all before. The old trick of screaming at the ref. It has to be a 12, surely, ref. Well, is it? Let's take a look here. It goes up and over, and I think it goes just to the left there, so uh, perhaps an yes. 11.30. Perhaps it's uh, the best toss of the competition so far. Well, Wout Silstra, maybe even an 11.45, actually. It's very close. If you're just thinking with the hour hand of a clock. Now, Hamish, you've competed against this man's father and against him in your time, haven't you? Yes, I've competed with his father six years before Gregor was actually born. But here is Gregor. He knows about caber tossing. He should do. He won the world championship three times and is the current world champion. You see the high position he holds it before he starts the run and he quickly runs and tosses it straight into the air. And that was pretty good as well. It was uh, to the right of 12 o'clock, so Edmund's going to get something like a 1.30. He knows he could have done better there. He's uh, shaking his head. This 22-foot cable, though, has been tamed uh, by uh, a few different men now. It shows the remarkable calibre of the athletes when so many of them can turn it in a competition here. Normally you would only have two, maybe three at most, turn the caber. Well, it makes you think just how big does the caber have to get before these uh, guys can't toss it. It really is the best collection of caber tossers uh, probably there has ever been. Yes, I think from all corners of the earth we've got uh, the top competitors and there's never before... Uh, been a field like this. Well, here's Dave Barron, the American. Can he live with the big boys? It would be something else if he did. Oh, it didn't quite hit the 90 degrees. And, uh, well, I don't know that that was a particularly friendly sign to the caber. He's uh, no longer toasting it with whiskey. <laughs> he's uh, telling it uh, he's had enough. It was close to 90 degrees, so that's going to be up at about 85, 87 maybe. Yes, he'll be judged on a degree of elevation there. And David Birkmeyer, the side judge in the green kilt, former javelin champion of Scotland, is doing the uh, side judging. Now, our last competitor in the caber, Scott Ryder, the Englishman. He's having a great day. If he can get it over, and he has done. Well done, and it's not and bad. It looks very straight too. 
It's well, certainly not the winner, but it's uh, in there on the high placings. Well, let's take a look at it again. Ryder smashes it over, and it's going to be somewhere around an 11 o'clock. And that'll be good enough for third or fourth place, I think. Scott's amazing throw was not quite enough to beat Zilstra and Venter, but a very respectable third place in the Kaber does keep him in second overall, and only three points separate the top three spots. So it's all to fight for. Right, we all know that modern day athletes have protein high diets, eat a lot of meat and chicken, but Bob, tell us what they did in the 18th century. Well, you've got to take yourself back to the 18th century. Imagine the Highlanders high up on the hillside, perhaps been there for two months. You couldn't run to the shops and buy your food, but what you had in abundance was oats. Yeah. And from your cattle, from their ankles, you would draw blood. Oh! It sounds, it sounds barbaric, looks a bit barbaric, but it tastes fine. Does it? Yeah, it I, tastes lovely. I'll give it a go. Mmm. That's good blood. And it's not far off black pudding that a lot of us still eat today. <laughs> Put your oats in. Pour your blood. Now you mm. pour as much as you want. Stuff through. Beautiful. A bit, a bit more bit blood. More. Never have too much blood. That's very true. Because you needed energy. You didn't just stand and watch your cattle. You were protecting your cattle. Well, unless you were cutting their legs to get the blood from Well, they actually, there was reports that in the springtime when they brought the cattle down, they could hardly walk sometimes, but it's between your life mm. and your cattle's life. Now, Natalie, taste that and mm. tell me that's not beautiful. Mmm. Oh, Bob. Divine. It's a way to a woman's heart in Scotland. A bit like an old-fashioned protein shake. Very true. <coughs> I water. <laughs> and now it's time to commemorate the Shiltram battles, man-to-man -man jousting with very long, very sharp poles. The challengers are going to have to both be strong and mobile if they want to get the better of their opponents. William Wallace introduced the Shiltram because his mighty sword was not effective against the English charging cavalry. It took strength and discipline to hold that formation. That strength and discipline is celebrated today. Well, if you want combat, this is as close as it gets. Scott Ryder taking on Dave Barron. You have to push the man out of the ring or at least uh, throw him to the floor through power and strength. And Hamish, Scott Ryder once again, once again defeating yes. the bigger man. He's using his power, he's down low. This could be a dangerous event. I've seen the bicep tendons torn here. Well, Ryder getting lower than Baron. He has some uh, very impressive leg strength, Scott. The Olympic bobsledder, of course, that's an event where you need uh, phenomenal foot speed. And he's got it. He's got it in abundance. Wout Zilstra in the blue kilt to up against Sean Betts and the world champion in Highland Games. Does not look comfortable at all and uh, he is chucked out the ring. Well, there's Wout. He's uh, shown his power. He's been in the strongest man in the world. Third. And he's been a Highland Games man. I know, but that was a long time ago, Hamish, back in Morocco in 1998. And, uh, but he's still got it, hasn't he? Yes, he's got it. So the Swede, Orcha, against Sebastian Venter. And Venter, we know, is carrying a shoulder injury. Yes, so, you could almost see that, the way he's holding the pole. He's trying to hold it with one arm, really, isn't he? His uh, left shoulder hurting. And he's uh, dipping it down there. He doesn't look comfortable. <laughs> the young Viking. Great effort from Orcha, who's had a pretty poor start to this final so far, but uh, something that doesn't involve technique. Watch out for him. And Sebastian Venter battled on with one arm, but uh, yeah, he knew he was being beaten by uh, a fully fit, uh, strong Swede there. 
So, Kirill Shapunin in the blue kilt against Gregor Edmonds in the red, and this is a tough draw for Edmonds. Bad luck in the first round to meet this giant. But look, he's doing well, isn't he, Hamish? Yeah, he's giving away at least three stones there. Well, that's a sneaky move from Shapunin. He tried to raise it over his head. I'm not entirely sure that's legal. But he gets Edmonds out of the ring in the end. Well, there's a grey area there. Dr. Edmonds, our referee, has given the victory to Shapunin. Well, let's take another look at that. Edmonds was really the aggressor here. And then, uh, well, it, it's uh, right on the borderline of being legal. Shapunin raises it overhead. Edmonds didn't have anything to push against there and uh, got himself back into a commanding position. So, youth against experience. Zilstra in the blue kilt against Orcha in the green in this first of the semi-finals. And Hamish, it looks like it's going to be all over. Yes, uh, Wout is defeated by a man half his age. There's no disgrace in that, surely. No, he's uh, fought bravely to the semi-finals. And let's face it, Orcha has now thrown out Sebastian Venter at 175 kilos and Val Zilstra at 160 kilos. So he is very much the giant slayer, isn't he? Yep, yep, and Scott Ryder too. Well, there seems to be some discussion as to who get, gets what end there. I'm wondering whether uh, they've spotted a better end and Shapunin was quickly in to grab it. Ryder doesn't look comfortable now. And, uh, well, he's giving away the bad end and about 40 kilos in body weight. It's uh, going to be a, an uphill struggle for Ryder here in this second semi-final. But knowing the way that Ryder has performed in all of the events in this contest, he's going to give it his all. Well, he's still Scott's fighting and hanging in there. He's on the move. It's a touch of the Muhammad Look Ali, isn't it? It's rope a and uh, he sits against the ropes, and now he's got Shaprunin. But Shaprunin again lifts it up over his head, and I have to say he fully took his hands off there and pulled Ryder forward. Ryder doesn't look happy at all. No, what is the result here? Well, Ryder looks over towards uh, the judges, and uh, referee Douglas Edmonds and Grant Anderson are discussing. See, Ryder was the aggressor there, but you're not allowed to pull the other man forward. And that's exactly what Shaprunin did. By putting it over his head, he allows Ryder's own body weight to do yeah, the damage, yeah. and that's illegal. And I'm pleased to say the referees... Ryder! Yes, they have come to a decision, and uh, I think that's the right one. Ryder goes into the final. So this uh, is uh, a huge battle, a best of three final. Scott Ryder. Again, the smaller man taking on Johannes Erho. <laughs> Cat and mouse once again. Ryder makes an attack, but Erho has an answer each time. And now it's Erho who's really pushing Ryder around the ring. Scott's trying to avoid uh, being pushed out here. Yes, he moves very fast. You know, there's the tactics there. Well, I think this could be whoever gives up first because they look absolutely shattered here. Oh, they're bound to be after these two days events. Two days and they've both fought two mammoth battles to get into the final. Who's going to give up first? I, guess, I think we might see a, a double knockout, as it were. Oh, Ryder finally slips to the ground. What a battle. Two men who really wanted the first place points. And I wonder whether we'll even have a second bout. I think uh, Ryder has given it over to Johannes Orcha as a victory. What a battle though, Hamish. You can see Ryder kept coming at him, but the body weight of Orcha was just too much to take on. Yes, and indeed Ryder, in a very sporting gesture, has conceded victory to Orcha. Well, that mammoth final took a lot out of the boys. The points were well earned there, with Chaprunin and Zilstra taking third and fourth. So, Scott topples Venter from top spot, with Sean Betts clinging on to third place. Scotty boy, I was exhausted just watching that. You must be knackered. Yeah, I'm pretty tired, yeah. Especially after expending all that energy and uh, still finishing second, you know. I could have... 
could have given up and got the same points. But, uh, Come on, that's not the attitude, <laughs> Scotty boy. <laughs> well, obviously not, no. But, but you did great. I mean, that was a tough old fight. You are the lighter of the two. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of felt he had a little more, a little more power than I had. So it was a case of sort of running around in circles, trying to, trying to catch him off balance, trying to hit him when he wasn't ready, and uh, just sort of sheer pride, not wanting to give in. But, sheer pride, <laughs> sheer pride. There kept him in there. He was a good, good opponent to you, wasn't he? But congratulations, you came out on top. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it was very nice uh, fighting Scott. It's like a little pit bull terrier. He's very <laughs> strong. He's a uh, he's a good guy too. So. A little yeah. terrier, did yeah. you say? Yeah. He is a little terrier. Yeah. yeah. But you seem to be doing very well at these sports. You're like a real warrior, a real Viking warrior. Yeah, I like these events when it's, uh, it's not so much technique and stuff because I haven't got the possibilities to train a lot of this Highland stuff mm. yet. But I'm going to start training at the uh, Cable and everything, and then I'm going to come back next year and be even better. There you go. Proof that brute force is everything. Yeah, exactly. In the olden days, the 56 pound weight was used to weigh farm produce. Oh, I can barely lift it, and they're only allowed to use one hand when throwing it. The current record stands at 17 feet 2 inches. That could well get broken today. These half hundred weights would be found in farmyards around the country for weighing produce. Young men would throw them over the boughs of trees to strengthen the back. Scott Ryder was absolutely shattered after the joust. He was the only one not to conquer the 14 foot height. Everyone else made 15 foot and we joined with the bar at 16 foot. Wow, 16 feet. That is a very big throw indeed. We saw that uh, in heat two on this very event, nobody could manage 17. <laughs> but Sebastian Venter, only one foot three inches off the world record goes clear easily. Now Hamish, that's got to be up close to the world record. It's uh, cleared it by about nine or ten inches, hasn't it? Oh yes, there uh, was a, a good clearance there. And here is the man who holds the world record, Wout Silstra. The big Dutchman. Oh, flying over. And he's well clear too. Do you think he liked it? I think he loved it, yes. <laughs> uh, that's why he keeps coming back again and again. He's still able to mix it with the big boys on two or three of the events. So, Kirill Shaprunin, ooh! Uh, this man is big enough and strong enough, but he didn't quite catch the technique there. No, I wonder how uh, the effect of fatigue will be hurting them. That last event, of course, Ryder didn't even make it over 14 feet. Uh, it's been a very gruelling competition over two days. This must be even worse than the Olympic decathlon, for instance. Indeed. Well, in the Olympic decathlon, you don't have to wrestle 25 stone men. <laughs> <laughs> and Sean Betts, uh, well, he doesn't uh, make it over 16 feet either. Just coming up short. In fact, he barely would have made uh, 15 with that. Well, he is a superb athlete and I'm sure he's cleared that often in the past. Well, Gregor Edmonds, I'm glad to say, isn't a true Scotsman there. He's uh, wearing his shorts. So, uh, going for the height of 16 feet and he too is way short. <laughs> I think he can't believe how badly he's thrown there. He really does need the points as well to try and claw back Ryder and Venter, who are starting to go off uh, on their own in the lead. Dave Barron of the USA, the Manhattan lawyer. Will he be cheering with delight here or taking the fifth? He's not far off it. Well, he's pretty quiet. But uh, at his best, he too has done 17 feet. Well, he's only two inches there, isn't he, Hamish, away from doing it? Yes. Well, you must fancy this guy for doing it. Ah, uh, this, this young man cleared uh, 16 six. Six in the heats, yes. So we'll see how he's fared with this exhausting competition. A couple of slaps to the head to wake him up. Oh! oh almost. Yes, it did go over, Hamish. It... Uh, Hit the bar, but had so much strength it managed to claw its way over. Look there, 
Yeah, it, it yeah, did. It teetered over the bar. Amazing. So, uh, Arjo, Zilstra, and Venter all go on to our next height. And uh, uh, you have to go up to nearly that white one. We go I to 17 feet, down. two and a half inches. Half an inch over the world record. And big Sebastian Venter is first out. This would be tremendous. <gasps> he had the height, Hamish, I think. He yes, just went it up was and down. Near, near enough. That'll be colossally disappointing for Venter. And if he'd have got that, uh, he'd have put the pressure on the other two. Well, Val Zilstra. He's this done is this. amazing. It he's, is amazing. He's and he's still in. But he's this done height. this many times before, hasn't he? Yes. This event, of course, originated in Scotland in the farmyards, but it now features in the world's strongest man at times. So you could say it's a strongman event as well. Well, they say the Dutch are the biggest race of Europeans, <laughs> and Zilstra's about the biggest of all of them. But even he can't get it over. He had a good pull at it. Just not today. So, the last attempt of the afternoon falls to Johannes Arjo. Can he steal the world record and take it back to Sweden? Oh, oh he's slightly under the bar this time, but it was a tremendous performance. Well, in the end, it was the poorest of all three attempts. Zilstra was probably the best. Guns. Mwah. Good work, Welt. <laughs> hey, that was impressive stuff, but disappointing not to finish on a real high. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a, the Scottish record, so it's. I had a good feeling before, but then if you look toward it, yeah, I, I think by myself it's too high today, yeah. What makes you so good at that event? Is it all about technique, power? What is it? Yeah, of course, you need a, a lot of explosive power. So I, 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 I do a lot of uh, working with, with weights for, to make it very explosive. And uh, yeah, I, I'm still feeling I'm the best thrower of the world, but I was for sure the best thrower of the world, weight for high thrower. You know what else you're the best at? Going, <laughs> You're brilliant at that. <laughs> <laughs> Told you. It's for me, I own that. I you own it, it. Uh, you own it. Venter, Zilstra and Orca all sharing the victory on this one. So those seven points are enough for the big man from Poland to regain his place at the top of the leaderboard. Join us after the break for some more epic action from the Highland Games. Honours. Welcome back to the Highland Games. We've seen some incredible action so far. The most impressive is yet to come. It's the Pictish Stone Carry. These bad boys weigh 400 pounds and the athletes have to carry them literally till they drop. The ancient Picts' only written history was a series of stone carvings depicting battles and symbols of their folklore. Here is the Stone of Schoon, a replica of the Stone of Destiny. Some say the real stone will emerge once again when Scotland regains its independence. As in the old days, we like to lift these things. Two heats of four, and Gregor Edmonds' Yo, far right of picture is in fifth position overall at the moment. He needs Already? to do so well at this to put the pressure on Scott Ryder and Sebastian Venter and potentially get on the podium. Kirill Shapunin has already dropped it. Remember, Shapunin last year collapsed with the stone after just two or three meters. Well, there goes Dave Barron. He couldn't have done more than 15 meters. And uh, Johannes Orcha is in the lead here. 
Is this tactics from Edmonds? Does he want to see where Orca is going to try and go past it? But this is a huge benchmark that will be laid out by Orca. And the crowd move as Edmonds looks like he's been hitting the whiskey barrels. <laughs> he just gets past Orca. What a battle, Hamish. Oh, yeah, that was a tremendous performance by Gregor. It just proves how great an athlete he is all round. Strength, speed, he's got it all there. This in itself is a very, very heavy stone to carry or even pick up in the first place. Well, determination, the stone crushing down on Edmonds's chest there. The oxygen was running out and check his legs out here. He starts to stagger, there wasn't any more there. Another meter, well, he just wouldn't have made it. Greg, a fantastic finish there at the end. The crowd really getting behind you, well done. I think it was the crowd that got me through that. It was not that easy. I was peering over my stone the whole time and uh, I saw Ario drop and I was, oh, thank you, God. The support of the crowd's been incredible, hasn't it? Yep, we love our Scottish people. Thank you for all your cheering today. And it paid off at the end. That could just be enough to get you in the top four. Oh, here's hoping, eh? So the final four go. And Scott Ryder on the far right. He's let Sebastian Venter go first. Clever tactics from Ryder. Sebastian doesn't care. He's just going for it. Zilstra has gone down. So too has Sean Betts. In fact, Betts didn't even get it off the plinth. Well, what can Sebastian Venter do here? Surely he's done enough already to take the victory overall. Now the real question is, can Scott Ryder hang on to it any further? No, he hasn't, but I don't think it matters. <laughs> he is now the two times champion, Sebastian Venter of Poland. Scott Ryder will take second place and Edmonds has leapfrogged Zilstra in the third. A mammoth effort then for Venter to retain his title, with Gregor Edmonds skillfully taking first place in the final event. So the final standings look like this. Sebastian Venter tops the table with Scott Ryder and Gregor Edmonds in second and third. So that means that Poland's Sebastian Venter is the greatest Highlander of them all. The trophy presented there by Anne Wilson from the event sponsor Wiseman's, and I got to give him the sword. I am Samuel So for the second year running, Sebastian Venter is the Highlander Challenge World Champion. It's a great achievement. It's been a great event. I've loved every minute of it. Hope you have too. It's bye from all of us at Spoon Palace. <laughs>